Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 28 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case highlighting the importance of guide catheter support for successful CTO PCI. Diagnostic angiography for this patient was performed using right radial axis and significant difficulty was encountered in engaging the right coronary artery despite using multiple diagnostic catheters such as the Kimni catheter, JR4, JR5, multipurpose. We were eventually able to obtain a semi-selective picture showing occlusion of the proximal right coronary artery. Of note, the patient had previous stents in the mid-right coronary artery. The left coronary system did not have any significant lesions. There was good feeling retrogradely of the right coronary with feeling almost all the way to the proximal RCA, suggesting short occlusion length. The patient did have both uh, some septals and some epicardial collaterals supplying the PDA in the right posterior lateral branch. So to summarize, the patient has a proximal right coronary artery chronic total occlusion with a clear proximal cap. The length is hard to accurately assess without dual injection, but appeared to be short, about 30 millimeters. The distal vessel had a good size without any bifurcation of the distal cap. And the patient did have both uh, septal and epicardial collaterals, although it was hard to determine if this would be interventional collaterals allowing retrograde crossing. Therefore, the plan was to start with undergrade wire escalation, then undergrade the sexual reentry and the retrograde approach. The patient returned the following week for attempting PCI of the right coronary artery CTO, and this time bilateral femoral arterial access was obtained with eight friends, 45 centimeter long seats. We then attempted to engage the right coronary artery. However, we continue to have significant difficulty despite using multiple guide catheters such as AL1, AL.75, JR4, and multipurpose. We were finally able to engage the artery using a right coronary bypass RCB guide catheter 8 friends. However, every time we would try to advance a guide wire through a microcatheter, the whole system would pop out of the coronary artery. Moreover, during attempts to re-engage, the guide catheter kinked. It's a fairly large kink, would not remove it. The good news is that we had contralateral arterial access, therefore we advanced the 12 uh, by 20 millimeters and snare, three loop snare. We could not advance it over the catheter, but then we fixed it and then advanced the kinked microcatheter through it. And then by doing that, we were able to snare the kinked guide catheter with um, our end snare device. After doing that, we held uh, the catheter straight through the loop and then we were able to straighten out the tortuosity essential and unkink the guide catheter. This was nicely straightened and shows by senior geography. And then we were able to advance a glide advantage guide wire that did cross through that area of kinking and entered into the aorta. So the good news is by using the snare, we were able to straighten the kinking, advance a wire through the kinked guide catheter. And then all we had to do is release the snare. Then the snare was um, removed and the guide catheter was then um, withdrawn into, um, uh, into, the, into the seat and successfully removed from the body. We then came back to the attempts to engage the vessel and we encountered the same problems. We tried the same guide catheters, including the RCB, but we were unable to engage the vessel. And after several of those attempts, we decided to try something different. So we decided to try retrograde crossing. However, after surfing both the first and um, the first large uh, septal, as well as the second, third, and fourth septal collateral, we were unable to get through. It did appear with injections without panning that the collaterals actually were coming mainly epicardial from the diagonals rather than from the septals. And it was at this point that one of our technicians suggested about trying the KR3H or Keys Ride H guide catheter, which is um, um, a shape 
developed specifically for the right coronary artery. That was a guide they had never used before, but there was nothing to lose, so we did try them. And we were then able to advance the guide into the coronary. We obtained stable position. Trying a Fielder XT and a Pilot 200 did not work. However, when we advanced a Gaia second wire, the wire very quickly popped through the occlusion into the mid-right coronary artery. We then advanced uh, a Turnpike LP to the mid-RCA, switched the guide wire for a Sion Blue workhorse guide wire, and successfully crossed the occlusion. Notably, it took an hour and a half to cross, mainly because we could not engage the right coronary artery, 52 minutes of fluoroscopy, and 2.6 gray of kermatose. So a lot of effort, a lot of time, all because of difficulty engaging the target coronary artery. The next steps were fairly straightforward. The lesion was predilated. A 3 by 24 millimeter drug eluting stand was placed. Um, the result appeared okay. However, we always like to perform intravascular ultrasound when we place osteal stands so that we can confirm, first of all, that the stand is expanded, but also, importantly, that the ostium of the vessel is well covered. And in this particular case, we did have fairly good expansion of the stand. However, as we moved towards the ostium, we did not have coverage all the way into the aorta. And that is why we advanced the second short 3 by 8 millimeter drug eluting stand that was deployed even more proximally. And uh, by doing that, we were then able to cover the ostium as we confirmed using intravascular ultrasound. The chroma flow is very useful for, for this purpose. We see again that there is fairly good expansion of the stent strut. And then we do have protrusion of the stent strut slightly in the aorta, which um, gives us confidence that we've treated the vessel adequately. So here is the left main, here are the stent struts, we're now in the aorta, and we do have slight protrusion of the stent struts into the aorta, which is exactly what we're looking for to confirm that the ostium is covered. So in the end, we obtained a nice and geographic result. The total procedure time was two and a half hours. Fluoroscopy time was 66 minutes, 4.3 gray air kerma dose, and 400 milliliters of contrast. There are several lessons from the case. The first is that guide catheter support is key for both CTO and non-CTO PCI. If one guide does not work, then trying an alternative guide is a good approach. This is something that is uh, learned and can be practiced and perfected over time. Uh, there is a fine balance between how hard one should try. You don't want to remove the guide catheter five seconds after it's inserted, but you also don't want to keep on using it for 30 minutes, the same guide catheter, if it does not provide success. Number three, one should have a plan for how to remove a kinked guide catheter should the kinking occur. The technique shown in this case, which is snaring the end of the guide catheter with the second um, guide catheter and the snare, and then allowing straightening of it and advancing a guide wire is the more commonly used technique. The fourth is to always be communicating communicating and listening to what the techs and everyone in the cath lab team says because everyone has something to offer and by being open you can get very good tips and tricks that can make the difference between success and failure as happened in this case. And last, once uh, an osteal stand is placed, it's always best to ensure that the osteum is truly covered by the stand as confirmed by intravascular ultrasound. Thank you.